G'day fellas, we're back. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We've got a YD25 Navara here instead of my ZD30 Navara, which is behind you. Um, today, or over the next couple days, I'm gonna be doing a major service on this car. So this Navara has done about 260,000 Ks. Um, so it's not too old, but it's not brand new. Um, and it started misbehaving. It's blowing a little bit of black soot. Um, so we're gonna go through and do a major service on it. We're gonna start with injectors. We've also got a brand new intercooler there because the crimps have started leaking on this intercooler, which is really common for YD25s. Um, so we're just gonna do a massive makeover on it. Um, and we've also adjusted the steering on it, which I'll do in a separate video um, and just keep that one nice and short. So I've got my book over there, which gives me um, all sorts of diagrams and exploded views of the engine. Um, and it also gives me things like torque specifications, um, which is handy. Um, and I might even show some of the pictures so that if you guys are planning on doing the same thing, all the information is in this video for you guys. So you can see the oil around this crimp here. The same thing over here, it's leaking out. Um, so we're gonna get in there, pull that intercooler off and clean it. Um, oil in the intercooler also means that there's oil in the intake and that builds up into hard carbon deposits, which isn't good. So I'd say it's also built up in the EGR. So we're gonna get that off and clean that up as well. Um, and I'll just get into the spare parts and show you guys what we've got. So right here, we've got your basic service kits. That's air filter, oil filter, and fuel filter. And then we've got the intercooler here. It's an Adrad, um, which is quite a good brand. Um, then we've got a VRS set, um, which is all your um, tappet cover, exhaust intake, um, injectors, all sorts of different seals in there. Uh, it doesn't include a head gasket. And here we've got our other parts. So that's four injectors. We're replacing the suction control valve. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna start with is probably disconnecting the battery. I'm gonna be working with a lot of sensors here and unplugging a lot of things. Um, and you know, with these more modern vehicles, you don't really know what's gonna upset what. So I'll start with unplugging the battery so that I can't damage any electronic components. So I'm not familiar with this engine, so what I wanna do now is take off the intercooler um, so I can see the whole engine and just familiarize myself with it, get an idea of where I'm gonna start, um, and then I'll probably go to the book and figure out where it actually wants me um, to start and what order I need to pull things off. Um, I've got it here now, how I need to remove different manifolds and different bits and pieces. Um, and it's quite helpful with the exploded views. You get an idea of uh, what order things go on. So these intercooler bolts are a 12 millimeter. I just went to grab my uh, magnetic bowl there to, <laughs> to use while I disassemble this and uh, it's, it's left behind my magnets. So before we remove the intercooler, you can see this little wire here is just attached. It's anchored to the intercooler bracket. So if we just take this little wire, it's held on by a zip tie. If we just pull that off, we should be able to lift the entire intercooler up. So we've got quite a bit of oil leaking out of this intercooler, which it's good. We bought a replacement one, it obviously needs it. Um, so it's great that we're replacing it while we're here. So this is an AdRad intercooler here. Um, it is quite expensive, it's around $1,100. Um, if you're looking to replace your intercooler for an aftermarket um, spec, I've heard that Forefront Industries uh, creates quite a, a nice uh, intercooler replacement for these cars. Um, that is actually the welded style. So this here is a, a crimp. It runs all the way around and they just crimp the edge over the tank. Um, the Adrad and the Forefront are both welded tanks so you don't get this leaking.
Alright, so we've got we've got one little zip tie to pull off and then we can fold this pole harness over out of our way um, and that'll give us better access to work on all our stuff here. So, that's our harness. Just pulled all the way off the engine, all the way out the way. Now we've got plenty of room to work there. We'll still have to remove some wires as we go, but that looks like it's the most of it. So this is what I would call a brake line spanner. So you can see that it's got five sides and an opening for you to put a line in. Um, this is what I would call a normal spanner, um, a ring end, and you can see that you can't get a line on the inside there. So with your injector lines, you can't use a round ring end spanner because you just can't get it around the line. With these ones, you slip it over the line and then over your nut, and you can get five sides of contact. I wouldn't even bother using a normal um, open end spanner because you will round those bolts. So make sure that you're using the right spanner. Um, they are a good thing to have in the shed anyway. Um, so if you have to go out and buy them, don't kick yourself. So the way that I undid the injector lines, I've got the brake line spanner over it like that. Then I got myself a nice heavy rubber mallet and you give it a good knock and it'll break that seal and drive it open. And I did the same on the fuel rail side. So what I'm gonna do now is, now that we've got all of our tap cover bolts out, um, I'm gonna make my way around and pry up on the tap cover with a screwdriver. Being very careful, it's old, it's plastic, and it's been through multiple heat cycles, so it could be very brittle um, and you don't get a spare tappet cover in a VRS set so be very careful you want to make sure that you're not going to break it when you pry up and just try and find some good places where you can get a little bit of leverage um, and just work your way around So when we remove the injectors, we need to know the compensation codes of each injector and where it came from, and we also need to know the new codes for the injectors going in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of all of these, um, and then I'm going to start removing them. And that is how you remove a YD25 tappet cover. Alright, so here we've got the instructions on how to remove the fuel injectors. So here's a massive exploded view of what you have to do. And then on the next page. We've got inj injector tubes, so which one goes where and how to remove them. And it shows you how to remove the fuel injector gaskets. And then here's a view of your fuel lines and injectors on the top of the head. Up top we've got a view of the injector in the head and the different parts of the injector. And that diagram there tells you how to um, find the injector adjustment value which is also the compensation code. So now we've gone along, we've gone done all these little banjo bolts that supply the return line. I'm going to take off this little nut that goes back to the return. And now we can take all of these out. Nice little copper washer there. So keep this in a safe place. Very important. Don't bend it, don't do anything to it. You don't want to break it. So now our return line's off, we've got good access to each of these clamps. So we'll get our big bar out again. They're going to be tightened down pretty firm, I think. So we're going to want a long brake bar on it. So we've got our injector clamps off. 
They're only held in there just by carbon buildup and pressure. So what we're gonna do now, I've got a 28 millimeter spanner. Just gonna grab it around the main body of it. Just give it a twist back and forth. Then grab it and pull up as I'm twisting. And they're actually loosened off quite quickly now. So I'll just get in there, just pry very gently up. That. Yeah, it comes. So we've got our brand new injector here. It's a Denso injector. They are expensive. Um, especially if you're doing all four. Um, we've got all our old injectors out there um, and what we're going to do now is I'll show you guys how to set up your new injector. So we've got our VRS gasket set here and we just want to open it up. So in this little bag here you can see one, two, three, four little copper washers. So you want one washer on every single injector at the base of it, um, right at the nozzle. And when you're installing injectors, um, I like to put a little bit of grease on it at the bottom and it will hold your washer on to the injector when you insert it in. So if you don't use grease, you tip the injector up the right way to put it in and the washer will fall down and then you have to make sure that it's, it's in there properly. So I just use a little bit of grease, just enough to stick it on there. It kind of just acts like a glue and then um, you can install the injector easily. Over here, we've got these little brown O-rings. So these are the injector O-rings and you want just a little bit of oil on them. So this is our injector. We've got a little cap here to protect the nozzle. That's your outline. That's your inline. And that's your connection for the electronic injection. This is where your O-ring is uh, retained in that little recessed groove. And your copper washer goes right at the tip here just to seal the injector to the head. So according to the Nissan manual, they want a little bit of oil on the O-ring just to make sure it's not dry when it goes in or it could tear. And there's our O-ring in position. Get a bit more oil. Make sure it's got plenty. So they've got a round side and a flat side. You can see here the flat side's on the bottom and the rounded side's on the top. So I'm just going to copy what came out of the car. Round side on top, flat side on the bottom. A little bit of grease. Apply a little bit on top of the injector. So you want the bevel side or the smooth side to the top and the sharp edge down. And just spin it around. You see we got grease all around it. And now when we flip it up, the washer stays exactly where it is, making it really easy to install. So we're getting ready to put the injectors in now. So I've just done a quick blowout with the compressor um, down all the injector tubes. And now we're gonna start putting the injectors in. We want a little bit of lube on the O-ring. And then just straight down the injector spout. And a little push at the end. Make sure that you've definitely got your copper washer on when it goes down. Make sure that you see it go into the tube. clamps on and when the clamps go on just make sure that they're sitting on the ball right so there's a little ball that sits on the back side of them over here and just give it a little wobble and make sure that ball's in the little um, recess that it's meant to live in All right guys, so the book says just here, that's your, um, the foot that goes onto your injector there. So there's the foot and there's the bolt. 
It says apply a little bit of oil to it, and then it also says torque it to 26.3 newton meters or to 19 foot pounds. So we've got the torque wrench set to 19 foot pounds. We're also going to change the suction control valve, which is just here. It's on the back of the fuel pump. It's got two hex bolts or Allen keys on the back of it that hold it in and a plug. Um, so we're just going to remove this old one now. So this one just here, um, from the top side, it's a small cream plug and it's cylindrical. It's this one here. And he's got nothing holding him in anymore, so I'm just going to pull him out. This is what it looks like. So there's only two Allen keys holding it in and the plug. So this is the new suction control valve. Comes with a gasket and an O-ring and it's also already fitted in the box with an O-ring up here. So we're just going to put that in place now. So we just have to feed our fuel line through that hole at the front of the engine there. And we've got all of our washers on our banjo box. Um, we're not meant to apply any liquid gasket maker to this, although there is a small section on the head that requires a bit of gasket maker. I've got the torque wrench set to 8 newton meters because the, it says 7.8, but I feel like 8 is close enough. Um, and we're going to start on this one, then we're going to go to that one. And then we're going to go to number three, which is this one, and then number four, and then number five, number six, and then number seven, number eight, and then number nine, number ten, number eleven, number twelve. So now we're going to put in our injector seals, so a little bit of oil on them. Alrighty, so we've got our harness bolted down. So now we just have to figure out where everything goes. We know that these four gray plugs are our injectors. So then we just have to follow. See this one's got a little zip tie there that has to be anchored here. And when you do that, it sort of positions itself right where it needs to go, right on the common rail pressure sensor, just like that. And then we got injector one, two, three, and four. I'm not gonna plug those in because we still need the codes off of them when we code the um, injectors into the car. Um, zero, one, two C, two five, two zero, two six, two A, two C, zero, 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 D4. Alrighty guys, so you can see that we've got the car back together. Unfortunately, I did miss some shots here, um, but you can see that the car's back together, it's running. Um, we've even installed the AdRad intercooler on top there, and we're currently bleeding the radiator here, so she's all back together, running great, better than it was before. So hopefully you guys can see what goes into changing the injectors on these cars um, and you can get more of an understanding on what's involved and maybe even tackle this yourself if you're up to it. So I hope this helps and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one.